Hi, everyone. So, um, like Lee said, my name is Sarah, and I'm going to talk to you about GraphQL and Apollo with using Vue instead of React, like in the front-end community we're very used to. So can I get a raise of hands? Who's the front-end developer here? OK. Who's using React? Who's using Vue? Thanks, man. <laughs> there was one at the front. Sorry, dude. Thanks, too. Um, OK. Uh, I also have these unicorn stickers if anyone wants them. And uh, this is one of the first times that I'm using Keynote. That's why I have that shitty animation. Vue is great. <clears throat> yeah, my name's Sarah again. I'm a front-end developer and developer advocate at YLD. We're a consultancy based out of London and Portugal. I am really into football, so I'm really excited for the Portugal-Spain. I'm from Portugal. Uh, before you get into anything. Um, I'm really into horrible, horrible movies like Sharknado, and that watching people fail on screen gives me life. And right now, I mostly live out of Airbnbs and hotels when I don't actually live in a place that has less people than the Apollo Slack, which is very interesting. <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if it's sadder for us or for them, but I, 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 I adore Vue. And I think this is like the best word for me to describe Vue. It's like, it's like the kitten of web libraries. It's like, I adore Vue. It's so nice. And like, I feel like Vue is the Harry Potter of JavaScript libraries. And you're like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. And it doesn't, but I'll get to that. So have you ever met anyone that truly hates Harry Potter? It's really hard to find those people. I mean, they're, I'm pretty sure they exist, but like, no one it's really hard to find anyone that truly hates Harry Potter, and I feel that Vue is the same thing. Like, it's, it's a nice library. It's so nice. It's so good. So, point proven, Vue is dope. Also, this is the perfect day for me to give this talk, and I'm not sure this slide is still true, because it was done like 30 minutes ago, and it may, still not, may not be true anymore, but Vue actually leads React by stars, which is like... <laughs> I use React a lot. I love both. I don't care. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Vue Apollo. There is this implementation um, made in the Vue community to work with Apollo and GraphQL, and um, it's it's very relatable to the new query components that, and mutation components that we have now in React. So it's actually not that different, and that's that's the kind of point that I'm going to show you because people are sometimes get really scared of Vue because of the chaos, because everything is in one file. But the thing is, I use styled components, so everything is in one file in React anyway. So. Okay, I really like that. I really like that GIF. So, uh, how? So, using Apollo Boost, which is a, a blessing from the gods of Apollo, um, you just yarn add Vue Apollo, GraphQL, and Apollo Boost, and you're all set to go. So, same idea as React, just switch React for Vue. And uh, the way of instantiating this is also pretty similar. So, you import Vue and your application, and then you import the Apollo client and Vue Apollo. And the reason this has a default client is because you can set other names for clients. So, you can have a default client that just new Apollo client. This one is a Graph CMS. And um, shout out, I guess. And uh, woo, thanks. And then you can have more clients, and you decide which. What, which of endpoint or local state stuff you want to use. And then you just wrap it in a provider. Same thing, basically. This h function is the create element function. Same thing Preact uses, for example. So done. So that's set up. Apollo Boost is what came to save us from our own horrible selves. And now let's talk about the query components. So in React, when you do the query components, you get a function returned, which we can use to return more components. This sounds very confusing, but it's actually not if you, if you look at it for like two days. Um, but um, it's like you get, you get this huge component that returns a function, and then that function gets all the stuff that you need to use. So actually, Vue works in a very similar way. These are the new components that exist. And this is the view, uh, the, view of the query for a view. Sorry, I can only have one clicker. So you, you import a query, basically as GQL. You can also import it in the data or whatever you want. And if you import it as JS, you have, since this is a require, you have to uh, require that default. Just letting you know I had that problem. And, in, and then instead of getting a function, you actually get a template. And the way Vue works is that you can get templates that have this just scope of what they receive. And in this case, it just receives whatever the, um, the query passes to it. So in this case, we get the result. And out of that result, we get the loading, the error, and the data. We also have a, a, an is loading that is uh, created by the, um, the, Apollo, the Apollo query component. And we do the, pretty much the same thing but in a weird templating language that you're probably not very used to unless you use Vue, 
do React. So you check if it's loading. If it is, show that it's loading. You check if it, if there has data. And if it has, just loop over all of that data. But instead of using a map, you use a v4. And then you just put all that stuff. So the thing that I want to explain to you about Vue is that these two things, I may be shaking. I'm not sure. Uh, but these, these two, like the thingies, OK? Cool. I don't know the name in English. This means that whatever you passed inside of it is a variable. So if you don't use that, it's just like it's going to just print out SID as the key for everyone. So that is the magic behind those. Yeah, you know what I mean. OK, mutation component also works in a very similar way to what it does in React. So uh, this is the mutation that I have. It's actually like a create speaker. This is getting out from the um, Awesome Talks website. Uh, and uh, so basically, you have a create speaker. You pass in the name. It's the only one that's required. I don't know why I made it the only one required. Don't ask me. Uh, so you create a speaker. That you give it a name. So it's the same thing as you are used to in any React or backend or any language at all. And you get the ID and the name. Awesome. Dope. Dope stuff. OK. So you get an Apollo mutation component. And in this one, you pass it the mutation. Same thing. And then you get the slot scope that gets the mutate function and gets the loading and the error. So this submit a prevent is just a fancy thing that Vue has that already does the prevent default that you always do. So it's just like, I got you, fam. Here's a prevent. Thanks, Vue. You're the best. And also, this V model uh, basically is a, um, this is uh, coupled tied to the data of, the, of that view component. So that V model name is actually automatically passed over here as a variable. If you set the variable name to that name, it's automatically updated every time you do a non-change. So I once saw a tweet about React, and I don't know who did it, which is like, React makes hard things easy and easy things hard. And this is the best example that I can tell you of what React makes hard. Like, this is, it's not hard to do in React, but it involves a lot more code than what you do here. But yeah. So on submit, you add a speaker that calls the mutate function. And then you have these two things. So the at done calls it when the mutation is done and has been either successful or as an error, because you suck. And then you have the update function that is basically called after it, it has done the mutation. So you get some optimistic UI, and you can change the cache. OK, so here is the update function that also works very similarly. So on done, I just clean out the name. And on update, you get the cache, and you get the data. And you just do normal, uh, normal array manipulation. You can actually change the array. So you got to clone the array and do all of that thing. So you can cat the thing that you just created. And then I just add a photo, because it needs a photo to be like prettier and stuff. But uh, you don't actually need to add the photo. So I add a place kitten, because why not? I can do whatever I want. Yeah. So, and you give it a type name so that uh, re, um, uh, Vue and GraphQL know what the fuck you're doing, because you also get that stuff, and it's a type name of asset. So as you can see, it's a pretty similar thing of when you have the idea that it's going to be a complete change. In Apollo, it's actually a pretty sweet, sweet integration that works very well. So I have a demo with all of this. I will also be sharing the slides. Um, I'll also be sharing the slides on Twitter. So this is a demo that is exactly what I just showed you, but with worse names of the mutations and stuff like that. So it's a less clean version of what I just showed you. I cleaned up some stuff, because I'm not an animal. And also, I, did, I, I usually, when I'm using React, I use Apollo Link State to manage the local things, because I, I have a crush on GraphQL, I think. I'm not sure. And um, I was uh, trying to integrate it with Vue and also managed to do that. It's actually pretty sweet. So this is the link to the Apollo Link State demo that uh, is just a to-do list because I became a developer for not being creative, I guess. So that is it. I am really excited about Vue. I think it's a really nice, really nice complementary thing to, um, to GraphQL. And like I said, I feel like it's the Harry Potter of JavaScript libraries. And since I feel like GraphQL is the, um, a, the um, technology equivalent of uh, noise-canceling headphones, I believe that these two are a pair made in heaven. So thank you so much. And this is the link for the thing. It's on now. So it's Apollo slash view slash love that now that is H. And thank you.